Hello guys and welcome to my Sephira Dragon Princess deck profile. Yes, finally I am getting on to another ritual monster. These are my favorite type of monsters. I love ritual summoning very much. And so before we go in, I just want to talk briefly about how the deck works. Pretty much you are normally at the beginning of the game, you're using either Shadals or you're deck thinning with a Manchu, trying to get uh, Sephira out. And then when you get Sephira out, you can prevent your opponent from special summoning and you can make Sephira unaffected by trap cards. So then she becomes this powerhouse that can pretty much will stay on the field and your opponent won't be able to do much against it. And then afterwards, you're trying to make as many Nephiliums as possible. You do, you will end up losing the ability to fusion summon from deck because your opponent won't be able to special summon at all, and I'll tell you which cards can do that later. But then, what you'll do is you'll just use your Shadal fusions and your L Shadal fusions to just make some enough aliens from your hand by hopefully drawing into the cards you need. And so, that's pretty much how the deck works. Your begin, your, the beginning game is all normally Shadals. If not, it's a searching middle game is the fear, and then late game it's just you have the fear and um, uh, Sephira and anything else that you have out. So now let's just go into the deck profile. We have Shadal Beast for draw power. Shadal Dragon to get rid of some annoying back row. Two Shadal Dragon, just so that way we can dump everything in decks in. Manju to search out either Him of Blessing or Dragon Princess. Those are the ritual codes that we will be using. Honest, we use Honest because that can trigger uh, Dragon Princess effect. So you can dump it during your opponent's turn and then be able to add it back to your hand during their end phase. So that can be a really, really nice thing to have. If you don't like to have this honest, you don't need to have it in here. It just pretty makes makes uh, Dragon Princess, uh, uh, pretty, pretty much it just makes it so that she can't be destroyed by battle. Mathematician. He can be used to dump any of the gins or... Or you can use them to dump a Shadal card to get it to deck then. Normally if I get them early, I'll use them to drop the Shadals. If I get them later, then I'll use them to drop whatever uh, gens I don't have. We have two release of rituals. This is a card that prevents your opponent from special summoning at all. You can banish this card from the graveyard as follows a ritual material monster. And if so, that's pretty much what it does. And then you can summon it out with two guys. And so you can make some really, really nice rank 3 plays. We have Hedgehog to search, Falcon to cycle, and allow for more draw power with Thief. And then we have the Seer. The Seer makes, will make uh, Sephira unaffected by traps. Now the other key thing to note here is that Jin and uh, Releaser and the Seer only equal 4. So when you go to summon uh, Sephira, you will, all, you will be able to dump another Shadal card or any other card that you might have in your hand to go with it. But if you dump a Shadal card uh, for a Ritual Summon, their effects still go through. So that is really, really nice to note. So you get no special summon, no traps, and then you can dump a Lizard into a Beast or into a Dragon. So that can be really nice. AD Changel, these are the guys you want to fusion with to make uh, Nathelium. Dragon Princess, her effect is uh, during the end phase. If you uh, light monster sent from your hand or deck to the graveyard, you can draw two cards, discard one, discard one random card from your... Uh, opponent's hand, or add one light monster from your graveyard to your hand, so that's what you do with Honest, you drop Honest, then add Honest. So that is really, really nice to have. Shadol Fusion for the Shadol. Foolish, pretty much just another form of mathematician, just a little bit faster. Use them to dump either the Shadols or the Jin. Preparation Rites, this card is so broken, because you can then set your uh, Hymn of Blessings and your Ritual Spell Cards, if they are destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can add them back to your hand, and still be able to search, but note, you do not have to have the ritual card in the graveyard. You can just normally use it to search out a ritual monster. Potted Economy, we're running a variety of different types of monsters, and so if we lose an Honest or a Manju, and we need to do some more cycling, the Potted Economy can do that, and it is a plus two, so that's very nice. Hammer Blessing, this is a card you use to summon our Dragon Princess, and it can be six or more, as I've said before. As I said, so you can drop the gins and the Shadal. And the other thing is, though, is if a ritual monster were to be destroyed, banish this card from the graveyard instead. So pretty much you can just start getting these guys in the graveyard and Dragon Princess will stay on the field. I haven't actually used him a blessing yet, kind of because it's just normally when Dragon Princess hits the field, it's game. El Shadal Fusion for those quick play fusions. Uh, and you can use Dragon Princess for a fusion summon. So if something were to pop up, you can quickly use it for Nephilim. 
uh, max chain second just because Dark Blood is really broken and it can trigger Shadal cards, so that can allow for multiple combos. Supply squad for draw power. Uh, facing the shadows and Shadal roots. Uh, that's for so that way we can do some cycling and to trigger off our Shadals and get that Shadal engine going. And for the extra deck, we have three Nathalium, one Dark Blood, two Midrash. We're only running two Midrash because. Uh, Dragon Princess herself is uh, better than Midrash, so I feel that there is really no point in getting out um, Midrash if you already have her out on the field. But yet it is key to note that you can drop the Jin for Fusion Summon if you're Fusion Summoning from the deck, so that is a really good way to be able to search out your uh, Jin. We have Star Eater because he's amazing, Stardust because he can be annoying, K Knight to pop two, Goyo because he's annoying, uh, especially in mirror matches, and Omadis because he gets she gets past everything. And then for rank three, we just have my favorite four rank twos, which is Levathian, Levier, Alucard, and Mechquip Engineer. I really like Mechquip because he he can protect pretty much any monster. So they get that one turn where they're able to break through skill midrash. You can protect it, protect midrash, and he, your opponent might not be able to come up with a follow-up play after that one turn. And so, this is the deck profile. The deck is really, really fun to play, but I've recently found an even more fun deck to play that I will be showing you guys later. But yet, if you, seeing how you can get Dragon Princess and Shadows in the same pack, uh, it is a possibility for if you might not, if you have some of these other cards just lying around to put them together. They work really well, and hopefully you guys stay tuned for the deck profile. I mean, not deck profile, the duel, yet it, um, when you get the box or a pack and you have a whole bunch of stars lying around, you can and just mix these decks up with very easily. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this duel or deck profile, and if you would be so kind to check out the links in the description area below where my mouse is, especially the Strikebox link, that is a really nice when you guys click that, or maybe even leave a comment, or maybe click on the annotations that will be popping up on the screen when I stop talking. Thank you guys for watching, see you guys later, bye! Hey, if you could click on the links and on the annotation to see the duel with this deck or some of my other videos, that would really help. And check out the links in the description to watch some of me and my friends' videos and even something that could help make this deck a reality for you. See you guys later. Bye.